All right, welcome back everybody. Today, instead of notes, we're just gonna start going over old concepts. So the first thing I wanna start with is one of the more challenging math-based problems that we do, and that's a limiting reagent problem. So take a moment, before we get going, I want you to jot the question down and see if you can get through the entire solution. If you can, you know you're ready for the exam, you can just play, press play and see how it goes and see if it compares to your answer. So take a moment right now. All right, hopefully at this point you have an answer, you know exactly which one limited the, the production of the CO2, and if not, let's see if we can actually understand it. If at some point you feel like you've gotten to a point where you can then take over the problem on your own, I want you to, and I encourage you to stop the video, continue the problem, and then see if it actually matches what I've done. So first thing, in a limiting reagent problem, we know that there's a couple of things that will always hold true. We have to be given two amounts, and in this case, we were provided with 12 grams of ethane and 12 grams of oxygen gas. And at the end, we are almost always going to be asked to solve for one single chemical species. And in this problem, we are trying to determine how much of the carbon dioxide form. Now, I could ask you how many moles, I could ask you how many liters, I could ask you how many grams. The only reason I can ask about liters is because this is a gas. And we mentioned before in class multiple times, if I don't tell you the actual pressure or a temperature, we can assume it's at standard temperature and pressure. So, Keeping that in mind, we're solving for liters this time, so hopefully we know the conversion from moles to liters. Let's go ahead and begin the problem. First problem is, if it, I want to do a limiting reaction problem, I actually have to have a chemical reaction. So let's see if we can make sense of what the information. I've given little clues, and I think this is the first big clue, is combust. I hope at this point we all know what a combustion reaction is. My fuel is ethane. So C2H6, and the one thing that I hope we remember that you always must have for a combustion reaction is oxygen. So I've got my oxygen, and we will always produce carbon dioxide and water. Now hopefully you remember that we have to have a balanced reaction as well. Why don't you take a moment and see if you can balance this on your own. If you are not able to balance this on your own, why don't you keep going and see how it goes. So the first thing I'm looking at is this is a combustion reaction. I want to actually take the time to keep account of all my atoms. This side I have two carbons. On this side I have one. Six hydrogens, and on this side two. Finally, I have two here, and just be careful, we have two plus the single oxygen for a total of three on this side. The carbons and hydrogens are easy, it's the oxygen that we're gonna to have to pay attention to. So let's keep it easy, balancing it. Now I have two of those, but I also disrupted the number of oxygens. So in this case, I have four oxygens plus another single oxygen for a total of five oxygens. That's as far as I can get so far. Let's go ahead and balance the hydrogen next. Remember, I save oxygen for the end because it's by itself. So let's see, hydrogen multiplying by three, and now I have my hydrogens equal to each other, but I also changed how many oxygens I have. Four here, plus another three there for a total of seven. I prefer to work in fractions, but I know many of you prefer in decimals. Whatever we need to know, we have to figure out what I have to multiply by two to equal to seven. Again, I think in fractions, so I'm thinking seven halves will get the job done. So, only issue now whether you put 3.5 or 7 halves, we know that we have to clean this whole thing up. We can't have decimals or fractions. So make it simple, let's get everything multiplied by 2. That becomes a 2, that becomes a 7, a 4, and a 6. So now we have a balanced reaction, we know how much we were given to begin, now we can actually start the limiting reagent problem. All right, so let's kick off. It doesn't matter which one you start with because we're gonna have to do both. Don't forget that there's a little bit of a shortcut. I'll mention the shortcut when we get into the problem. Here it is. First one, I'm gonna begin with my 12 grams of the ethane. And again, I'm trying to get to carbon dioxide. Hopefully at this point we realize if I'm starting with one chemical species and I'm going to another chemical species, I'm gonna to have to use my mole to mole ratio at some point in time. So the first thing is whatever I'm starting with, whatever my quantity is, I wanna to get to moles as quick as I can. So I'm gonna get to moles using my molar mass. So I cheated, I looked this up already. The molar mass of C2H6, two carbons, six hydrogens, is going to be a total of uh, 30.08. And now I'm in moles of this ethane, so now I can get to moles of my new chemical species, which is CO2 in this case. So moles of C2H6, that ethane is now able to be converted to the carbon dioxide, which is what I'm trying to solve for. So now to get my mole to mole ratio, the whole point of balancing that chemical reaction is so we know how many moles of C2H6 actually produce when they react with the oxygen, how many are actually produced to the carbon dioxide. So my ratio is two moles of ethane 
to four moles of carbon dioxide, and you're more than welcome to reduce that to two over one if you want to, make it a little bit easier for yourself. Last thing, I'm getting really close. Since we're assuming that this is at STP, standard temperature pressure, and we can always assume that for stoichiometry problems unless you're told something else, we know that I can go from moles of a gas to liters of a gas. And that number will never change, it's always 22.4 liters of gas is equal to one mole. So here's my first one all worked out. I'll get the answer in a moment because, to be honest, the answer I'm going to get won't make much sense until I actually solve my second part of the problem. So now I'm going to begin with my 12 grams of oxygen and still solving for liters of CO2 so I can compare the two. Now, for this one, I really want you, I encourage you to stop now. Even if you struggled with this first portion, I think you're at a point now where you can take the second problem all the way through because it is going to be very, very similar. The only thing that's going to change is how we begin the problem. So now I've started with my 12 grams of oxygen. Same thing. I have to get to moles of oxygen before I can even think about getting to the CO2. So for this one, one mole of oxygen, with it being diatomic, We'll have 32 grams for one mole. Next step, we're really getting close now. Now I just have to go mole to mole. So this time, instead of going from the ethane, I'm going from moles of oxygen to moles of CO2. Don't forget, we're still solving for the same thing. We're still going to CO2 in both cases. This time, my ratio is a little bit different. This will still be four, because it's still the same coefficient from the previous one. But this time, I have seven moles of oxygen per four moles of carbon dioxide, or seven moles of oxygen produces four moles of carbon dioxide. Last step, same as before, I'm going from liters, from moles, excuse me, from moles of CO2 converted to liters of CO2. And the same thing applies, 22.4 liters per one mole. So again, I've cheated, I've already calculated the answer. Why don't you take a moment, get both of these worked out, and Judging by sig figs, we should have both answers with three sig figs. First one comes out to be 17.9 liters of carbon dioxide. The second one works out to be 4.8. And since I have to go to three sig figs, I'll just add that zero in to account for my third sig fig, 4.80 liters of carbon dioxide. To be honest, we're 99% there. Now we just have to determine which of these answers actually logically makes sense, which one should be tossed out and then we can figure out which reactant limited the production of CO2. So, I've got two answers. I've got 17.9 liters and I've got 4.80 liters. So if you remember back to the bicycle analogy, if you have five million frames to build a bicycle with, but you have 10 wheels, you can only build five bicycles. It's the wheels that limited how much you could produce. In this case, it doesn't matter that this 12 grams of ethane could produce 17.9 liters. We always have to go with a smaller value. So this number, unfortunately, is not going to apply for when we're determining our theoretical yield. Our theoretical yield is 4.80 liters of carbon dioxide. And so, when it goes back to which one limited, well, these are our two reactants, either the ethane or the oxygen. And in this case, the one that limits production is going to be the oxygen gas. And so when this reaction is done and completed, and it's all gone, all that will be left over is the ethane. And that one will be in excess. At this point, I hope you have a little bit more confidence in your limiting reactant skills. Tomorrow, we will get into a little bit more stoichiometry, and we'll practice a few more of these if we need to. Best of luck, and let's get more practice problems done before tomorrow. Take care.